Hey golfers, and welcome back to another episode of the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. Uh, today's a great one. We've got, if you're out watching on the YouTube, by the way, we've got a bunch of these putters here um, in between Larry and myself. And speaking of, that's our guest today is Larry Bobka, uh, back in the great state of Minnesota after a couple months down in Arizona at our Scottsdale store. So, uh, how, first of all, how when did you get back? It's been it's been recent, right? I got last couple back weeks? last Wednesday. Okay, so. And by Thursday night, I had four blankets covering me because I was <laughs> flipping cold. Well, okay. there's definitely a difference, <laughs> yes. but it's it's been warm here. Yes, it's been it's, it's been, been very here. nice. I mean, yesterday was 64 degrees or yeah. something in Minnesota in February, so it's been okay. Yeah. Actually, there was a there were a few days that actually it was warmer here than it was in Arizona. How'd that, make you, how, how'd that make you feel when you're in Arizona? <laughs> uh, maybe an extra margarita. Yeah. I, I can't I can't I can't lie, Drew. Maybe an extra margarita. Yeah, I probably. suppose. I figured. Okay. Yeah. Uh well good. I know, yeah, I know a lot of golfers uh, we got to work with a lot of golfers down there yep. and, and um yep. we, we love that Arizona store, obviously. It's it's pr- if you haven't been to it and you're able to get a chance, it's a spectacle down there to see how big and, and how I guess extravagant that store is. So yeah, uh, it's a, it's a big I I I was very fortunate. I I worked with some people, uh, some customers, and putting from a nine-year-old kid that maybe has the best putting stroke I've ever seen. Wow! Um, and all the way up to you know my great friend Tom Percher. We were working mm-hmm. again on mm-hmm. that. Um, Kevin Streelman came and saw me a couple times there, and and. You know, it's it's interesting down there because, you know, it's in season and you get so many oh, people sure. that are flying from Canada and Minnesota and all these things. And they might be snowbirds staying for a few months or they're just on their golf trip and they, you know, they want they want the magic wand. Yeah, the magic you know, wand. I want it. I want it now and I want to shoot 65 tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we uh, we do have some magic wands to talk about today. Yep. Um one thing I did want to first before we do that is just get because we haven't talked to you since you know all the new products came out from yep. the big brands and you've been fitting down in, in Scottsdale. Yep. So um, kind of your first impression on some of the new stuff out there and if there's maybe one or two products you really want to highlight that have been awesome. I know you've been doing primarily putter stuff down there. Yeah. So um, is there any of the you know whether it's drivers, irons, or it is a putter that that's, you've been really impressed by so far? Well, yeah, and I don't want to you know act like a a ping advertisement you know now that we got the <laughs> fitting thing there but uh the 10k the new 10k is amazing yeah uh it's basically a driver in between the max and the lst mm-hmm. with more forgiveness so i would say for in you know fitted it for an 82 year old guy fitted it 14 year yeah. old kid uh very very good product um I would say the new smoke driver is very mm-hmm. good. Um, I happen to have a new smoke driver. Ah, there you go. Um, that very happy. I, I actually went from a rogue triple diamond to a smoke uh, max. Oh, okay. With a little bit less loft um, and very happy with the product. Very, wow. Yeah. Um, that's really good. The tailor made The TaylorMade line is... The, the best we've seen in a while from TaylorMade. From yeah. TaylorMade, that's what I've sure. heard too. Um, yeah. yeah, they've really they've done a good job of strengthening the face a little bit. Yeah, um, so I know they're they address the durability issues that they may have seen. Yeah, and I also like the look way better too. Personally. And a little bit more speed too. Yeah, yeah, we've seen more speed and nice. You know where the where the stealths tend to be a little bit right bias. This this doesn't seem to be as right bias. Okay. So yeah, yeah, no, very happy. I mean it, it's. Everybody that's come in is like, hey, I want, I want to try, you know, let me try 10K, let me try the, you know, the QI, and let me try, let me try the smoke. Yep. And let's see, let's see what, let's see what plays out best. So. Sure. Um, yeah, I think it'll be a great year for all of those those product lines. Yeah. That's gonna be, it's gonna be a big year. Yeah, so. absolutely. Um, and then, you know, on the on the iron side, um, I would say for somebody who is. You know the player's distance kind of player. The new AI smoke is really yeah. is really good. Um, you gotta like the blueprint. You know me, I'm a blade guy, so blueprint T is right. is you know I put it down and looked at it and went, 
man, if I didn't have my own golf clubs, I'd be playing that. <laughs> right. 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 So, um, yeah, no, really, really, really good. Uh, really happy with those. Um, you know, the new, the new tailor made iron is good also. Um, but you know, especially down in Arizona, we fit a lot of ping, the HL stuff. Oh you know, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, Mizuno, Mizuno high, Mizuno mm-hmm. HL down there. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's a thing now because clubs have gotten so strong lofted and so low spin that if you don't have the speed, you need to hit it in the air. Right. So a lot of good, a lot of good options. Sure, yeah. yeah. There's a ton of new stuff. Uh, it's been, I know, I've been talking to the fitters here. Yeah. in Minnesota and, and it's they're really excited about a lot of it so yeah absolutely um, now I want let's go back to the to the magic wands okay. that you mentioned so uh, today primarily is going to be focused on this trend that has emerged of um, longer than standard length putters long longer and longest yeah yeah there we go so um, if you're watching on YouTube we've got the all of these you know they're what probably 38 to 39 and then up to 45 inch putters here right. Um and it is a trend it's, that's right. emerged here. So right. um, I guess, first of all, why do you think this has even started to emerge as a trend? Like what what is sparring this this fad of longer length putters? It started on tour, obviously, but now it's becoming very popular just with any well, golfer. you know, you hate to say it in, in a bad way to somebody's ability to putt, but sometimes it's, you know, what's the last resort? Yeah. You know, I, <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm struggling with it. I'm struggling with a shorter putter. You know, I, I'm playing well. I'm hitting the ball good, and I'm not getting anything out of it. You know, why not take it advantage? I mean, look at somebody like Bernhard Langer, who has putted six, eight different ways yeah. from short, holding on to doing to mm-hmm. how he puts now, and has been very successful. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think. You're doing a disservice to yourself if you're struggling putting and don't try one of these alternative methods. Why w- yeah. Why wouldn't you? You know, hey, it's, it's, you know, as I've said before, my great friend Phil Rogers used to say, I mean, it's a scorecard. It's not a postcard. Right. There's I mean, no right? pictures on it. <laughs> there's no pictures. There's no style points. It's all about putting those little numbers in the box. Right. So I think it's well worth trying, you know, hey, and we all – physical aim you know i have a bad back does it is it easier to stand taller to absolutely Mm -hmm. you know i don't practice nearly as much as i used to yeah Uh, so is that one of the reasons they are working is it is it is part of it for a lot of golfers just having back issues or is there because i know there's also the counterbalancing stuff to them as well so you well, know, I, think I guess what aspects are making them work better than a shorter length? Putter? I think I think there's a couple reasons. I think you you've got first of all you you've struggled with the way you put it. You yeah. know, you got a house full of putters. Yeah. Where do I do? Where do I go now? What do I want to do? You know, it's kind of and you know Kevin Streelman came in to me with a bunch of putters and said, "Hey, I'm trying this. I'm trying that. What do I do?" You know, you have to find out what the best method for you is. What's going to be the most consistent? You know, that's why, you know, we use Quintech because we want to get numbers. We want to get numbers that will help you roll the ball better. Well, if I've got a short putter in my hand, and I don't care if I'm putting conventional, I'm putting cross, if I can't make that ball roll consistently, let's take a look at something else. Mm -hmm. Now, on the other side of it, is okay now i buy this 39 38 inch putter it's bigger it's heavier it looks well i got to get comfortable with it so i start practicing more yeah it's amazing how practice how practice helps but if you're frustrated with a short putter and you're going to practice and you're going to see some results and you're going to see some success then you're going to keep doing the same thing over and over again why wouldn't you and and see what happens right and i think there's also probably a confidence you know aspect too that you're referring right. to where like i'm one of those players i have i, I putting it's gotten better in the last right. year or two but I'm, it's i have the the arcos membership where i can see my stats and see my strokes gained relative to other players at my level right and putting is is the worst one of the you know it's driving it's approach play it's short game it's putting or the right. four that it's measured every time in most of my rounds, then of course, when you extrapolate it over, you know, a large number of rounds, putting is always the worst category. 
and so that's where I feel like I can make up the most stats. I just ordered one of the Jailbirds, um, the Jailbird AI, the Cruiser one for 2024. Yeah. Um, I've tried it a bunch in the store. I've tested it out. It feels great. I love the look of the kind of the striped club head, but yeah. there's that feel element of an extra heavier club head, with the counterbalance in the shaft. It's To me, it feels like it's more stable on the putting right. stroke. So there's – and, and – a lot of that again it goes back to my confidence i know i i have a lot more confidence on putting stroke from thousand, thousand inside 15 percent. feet that it's going to be a, a solid stroke right yeah you know like i got a great story about the lab putter and lucas yeah. you know and if you want to go through some of this first i know you want to be structured i'm very unstructured <laughs> I know, I know, when, I know. It come, when it comes to discussing things you know we'll just but yeah it's confidence you know and if i believe this design is going to help me get it in. I mean, why think about it back in the day? I mean, before you were ever born and we're playing persimmon woods and balada golf balls. Mm -hmm. Well, now all of a sudden metal woods come out. Well, then all of a sudden oversized metal woods come out with Big Bertha. Then all of a sudden titanium comes out. All of a sudden the club head gets bigger, bigger, and bigger. Well, people put now, they put a 10K down and go, man, I, I, I can hit this all over the face and still hit a fairway. Okay, well, that's confidence. It's the same thing with this. If I've got something in my hand that's going to help me swing the putter better, it's going to help. You know, one of, my, one of the things that I really feel that most poor putters do is they over-accelerate. Mm-hmm. Okay, they tend to take the putter back shorter and hit it like this. Okay. The tour player is going to take the putter back. He's going to swing it, and there's going to be there's going to be more backswing and less follow through. The putter is actually moving constant. Okay, most people think that well, if I do this and I don't take a long follow through, I'm decelerating. Absolutely not. I mean, over acceleration of a putter is one of the worst things you can have because you've been on the Quintech before. Yep. If I over accelerate, well one time I do it this way, one time I do it this way, one time I do it that way, one time I do the way the putter's delivered is more inconsistent. Absolutely. Yeah. It's totally more inconsistent. Well, these are longer, heavier. It's going to help you swing the putter. I mean, that's the whole thing. I mean, you know, I'm sure I've said this multiple times on on videos and whatever. I mean, to me, Putting's like playing cornhole. Mm-hmm. I got I got the beanbag, and I'm just trying to toss it to the corner there. Yeah, I'm not thinking about anything other than the distance that I'm tossing this from here to there. I'm not thinking about arm speed. I'm not thinking about anything. I'm not thinking about alignment. I got a bear in one hand, and I got and I'm tossing with the other. <laughs> right, right. And you're tossing it pretty good. Well, that's what putting is. Mm-hmm. Okay, and if and if one of these allows me to do that you you're so far ahead of the game yeah because ultimately all i really have to do is line the putter up on the correct line get my body in a comfortable position and roll the ball the right speed Mm -hmm. okay if i can do those three things then you're going to be a pretty darn good putter yeah Okay. And yet, at this point, it, you're, it's it doesn't matter what the, the tool is, the putter is, if Absolutely if it works, not. you know. So, because we have, it's almost like two categories of long putters that have sort of emerged here. Right. So, we've got sort of the, you know, I don't want to call them mid length, but you know, like thirty six to thirty eight, right. thirty nine inches, um, with kind of a longer grip, counterbalanced, and then typically a mallet style club head. Right. Um, is one ca- at one category there of these longer putters. Um, and actually, I know we've got a couple models here. We've got um, a Jailbird model. We've got the Ping Tomcat here. Right. We've got another special one that you've brought with us as well. We have, I'll we, let you we, share as much we, as you want to share well, about we that. Have the, we have an LB prototype. Yeah, we have an LB prototype. So with those models specifically, you know, what is the driving factor that makes them so effective? You know, because those are – they're not the – you know, split grip, right. long 45 incher, but they're longer than a standard 34, well, 35 inches. These are the old ones that when you used to be able to anchor it in your belly. Yes. Okay. So which I you, did for a while. So and was, added, was unfair. So if you added a couple inches to some of these putters, it would be a belly putter, yeah. right? 
where people felt very confident because it was anchored in their yep. belly and they could swing the putter. It's kind of the same feeling that I want some I want some length above, you know, above my hands so I feel like there's just that I I can just move the putter smoothly mm -hmm. through the impact area. You know, one of the things that I've seen, especially when I saw in Arizona, was people were grabbing these longer putters that maybe they're putting with 34, 35. Now they grab the 39. Well, they get the ball way too far away. I mean, the whole idea is actually to get the ball closer mm -hmm. to reduce the arc of the, to reduce the arc and reduce the face rotation. You know, where you can just naturally do sure. that. You know, most of these putters tend to be face balance. Yep. Okay. Mine's not face balance because I still think there's players that need some face rotation. Okay. We talked earlier before we started, you know, Lamont Mann's working on mm -hmm. a prototype. Um, Liam from Embrace Putters, he and I designed a putter, which we're going to, you know, it'll be for sale on secondswing.com yeah. soon. Um, but we went in there and designed a putter in, in, you know, this is the weight, this is the look, this is what we want. For somebody that to build confidence this is what I want the putter to look like. This is how I want it to feel. This is how I want it to sound. Yep. Um, so that was really a cool part about being in Arizona is being, a work, being able to work with Lamont and Liam directly, right. or, you know, two of our great right. handmade two sticks guys. Experts in their craft yeah, already. Absolutely. And then yeah. this kind of new fad sort of working together to yeah. build something there. Yeah, we took a selfie of it one day, you know. Perfect. Two old, <laughs> two old, two old fat guys and a skinny guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much that's pretty much what the picture was but they're into it you know they're they're down there they're playing people are coming in people yeah. are walking in the store walking back to see lamont mm -hmm. going i want to putt better well th this is an opportunity yeah you know somebody like ricky hey i wasn't you know always used uh you know always used an answer style putter mm -hmm. you know used the scotty cameron for years and, and was struggling well okay well, you're hitting the ball better. We're not getting anything. Let's try something. Yeah. Well, all of a sudden, sometimes, you know, it's like the cartoon. The light bulb comes on above your head, and it's like, hey, this is going to work. Yeah, and then money talks. You start winning. You start winning. Wyndham Clark's another one. Well, you start winning. The confidence starts growing, and now you start going. Now you just mm -hmm. start – it just starts breeding confidence. Yeah. You know, that you, you're not – you're not scared to go on the putting green. You're excited to get on the yeah. putting green because you I feel, get to go make birdies now. Yeah, I feel like I can make it from anywhere. Right. Yeah. I mean, last year alone with that jailbird, and that was kind of the the the, the model that popularized this right. style. But there's a lot of others out there like this. But yeah, Ricky Fowler came back and won. Wyndham Clark right. won a couple times and a major last year. Yeah, Keegan well, Bradley, same deal. Um, and there's well, a think about Freddie several Cou more too. Freddie yeah, Couples. Freddie Couples. Put, Freddie Couples has putted that way for years. Mm -hmm. With his Bettinardi putter, you know, there's a putter that's got yeah. some that's got some toe hang to it, but he's putt because he was he was a belly putting guy, and then couldn't do it anymore, so he lengthened it, and you know he's putted well. Victor yeah. Victor Hovland, Victor Hovland. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, so this is not necessarily new. Yeah, it's popular because it's now. because it's the golf business. Nothing's yeah. really new. It just kind of comes around. Um, so. But it's popularized. There's some success. There's some people looking at it going, hey, if I'm going to spend some money, why should I just buy the same old putter again? Yeah. If something's why? not working, let's try something new. Right. If I'm going to, like you said, right. put the money into and it. And if you can honestly see that, you know, and if we can honestly give some, someone some information that, hey, this is going to putt better than what you currently have, you're rolling the ball better. You have a major opportunity to make putts. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. So there's, and then the other one is this Mez One Max, right, from Lab. Yep. Um, and now that's the kind of the popular one, but there's a couple others out there, but that's the one that's sort of the most popular, and it's kind right. of that um, broomstick style is yep. what it's been dubbed as. Yep. So now that's the one that Lucas Glover went to. Yep. There's a few other names, you know, Adam Scott, Will Zalatoris, right. guys that have gone to that similar thing where they guys that maybe struggled putting a little bit or were looking for an answer and yeah. 
This has kind of provided it for them. Lucas Glover won right away last year. No pun intended. That's a good point. I didn't even think of that. Looking for an answer. Looking Uh, for an answer. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Lucas won right away with it last year. He did. And uh, and I'll tell you a great story. So, you know, he he came here to play 3M. So Mm -hmm. we met up. We met up and we walked a Tuesday practice round together. Now, you know, I helped Lucas for, you know, about three years with a shorter putter, kind of get back to putting good. Yeah. Felt like he kind of plateaued on that, and he was starting to go down a little bit with yeah, the short Yeah, he had putter. won the John Deere a few years yeah, ago. And, yeah, one yeah. John Deere putting short. Um, played really well, gotten into a first tour championship in 10 years. So, you know, started yep. kind of started getting his career back on track, you know, and trying to get his putting as solid as his ball strike. Yeah. So, but he just felt like that he kind of plateaued and he started to go back the other way. And he just, so he just, he had tried Adam Scott's putter somewhere and he just called the guys up at lab and said, Hey, I want a putter just like Adam Scott's, you know, we're about the same height, went home, had two weeks off and he went into his indoor putting green at home and taught himself how to long putt. That's it. That's it. Wow. That's what he did. And then he won like twice in a was it did he win twice in a row? Was that what it was he last year? He won twice in a row. Well, he he putted really well in the practice round in the pro am at uh, 3M. Okay. And missed the cut. And I was I was as shocked as anybody. You know, <laughs> I talked to him afterwards. He goes, No, he goes, I rolled it great. He goes, you know, some weeks it goes in, some weeks it doesn't. Sure. And then, you know what, two weeks later he wins twice in a row. <laughs> okay. But it, it's not surprising. But he also tried to figure out, too, that, you know, now that it's not anchored, to me it's a little bit of a, it's a, little bit of a two-handed stroke now. Yeah. When it was anchored, you could hold it here, and then you're just right. kind of working this way. Well, now there needs to be a little bit of movement, you know, in the ability that it's hard to hold it, and if you try to hold it and then do this, it doesn't work too well. So yeah. he kind of figured out a little secret. And I won't tell the secret. <laughs> um, but he found a little secret for him yeah. that helped him roll the ball better, and he really ball, really rolled the ball beautifully. Because uh, so, but again, it was all about speed. I mean, yeah. one of the things we always worked on was speed. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember one time years ago at the Bears Club, and he's like, you know, hey, I think what you're telling me is not right. Blah blah blah. This and that. You know. The typical player instructor bantering sure. that nobody hears about, you know, and I'm like, y- your speed's bad. No, it's not. And I left out a few words in there. <laughs> no, it's not. I said, yes, it is. I said, do me a favor. Walk, pace off 17 feet, hit three putts. First one went about four feet past. The second one went about three feet short, and the next one went in the hole. He looked at me, and he goes, God, I hate when you're blank and right. (laughs) But this style has made his speed better Mm. if you watch him play. The other side of it, too, he's practiced. Yeah. you got to. And not that he's never practiced. I mean, we would spend sometimes five or eight hours on the putting green at the Bears Club working. Right. So it's not like like he wasn't working. But – now it's it's working hard, better roll, and yeah. confidence because he's seeing some results. Yeah, and you have to put the time in regardless. I mean, even yeah, somebody listening to this or watching this, that's you know, it doesn't matter what their handicap is, but if they're trying to improve their putting and this is potentially an option, you're still gonna have to put in the work to get used to the model, well, get used to the feel. And as, as I tell everybody, that. I mean, it's forty percent. It's about forty percent of your game. Yeah. Some people, it's even a little more. It deserves at least 40% of your practice. Standing on the range, beating drivers and hitting seven irons, you're far better off hitting a bunch of wedges and then going to the putting green for two or three hours yeah. and practicing. So, yeah. you know, it des- it deserves it. So any style that you do, ha- you know, comes with comes with that caveat that, oh, I got pra- to right. practice a little bit. Yeah, yeah, but it's – uh. It's fascinating because even like Simon here, you know, he's just pumped about these putters. Right? Oh, I know. And, well, I, and I know, I mean, I've even talking to some of the, the team here. Yeah. A lot of people are throwing them in the bag this year, right. trying them out, myself included. Right. Um, I'm pumped to see 
how it improves because I, I feel like it's almost as if you read a six, seven foot, eight foot putt correctly. Seems like I mean, there it, to me, I'm not missing that putt. Right. If I read it correctly. Right. right. Uh, so I don't know. I I'm not. That's if you're if you're listening to this, watching this, you've kind of seen maybe a little bit about these putters, but don't know the extent or haven't tried one. I am endorsing it, and I am suggesting that you try one. Well, I think the best thing to do is if if you're around one of our stores, yeah. is to come in and work with a putter fitter there, and and try it and yeah. see see if it really is for you. Okay, I'll I'll I'll, I'll go to the other side. Is Kevin Streelman came in with some of this stuff? Yeah, and actually wasn't was worse than what he was doing with a short putter okay yeah that's a pga tour player the other thing is gave him a few things to work on came back he's like oh my gosh i'm rolling it better than i have in a long time well i just i just turned kevin streelman back into kevin streelman there you go i mean it's simple as that right you know? uh, but but if i'm standing there and if you know and you know you know my favorite place to play is chaska mm -hmm. so you know, you're out there at Chaska Town, of course. You get a beautiful drive on the first hole. You get it over the hill. You hit a wedge to 15 feet. You shouldn't be dreading going up there, going, I'm going to hit it. I got to hit a 15-footer now that breaks a little bit left or right. And if I hit it a little hard, it's going to – I mean, the game's hard enough, okay? But if I have one of these where it's like, oh, I'm just going to stand up there, line it up, swing this putter, and see what happens. Yep. You're, you're, like I said earlier, you're way ahead of the game. Why, mm -hmm. why wouldn't I do that? Why wouldn't right. I, why wouldn't I try something alternative to make the game easier? Yeah, exactly. Now, the other question I have, and I, I'm curious on your opinion on it, because, you know, you, I, I would say, I would call you kind of a, a, a traditionalist. Is that, is that, is that fair in, ter in terms of the way, like the, the die, designs? Die, of die in the wool traditionalist oh yes well like the, the designs of clubs that you like absolutely, and are in your bag absolutely. are pretty traditional right absolutely so, but do you think this trend will stick around do you think it'll last do you think or maybe will it be more of a fad that kind of fades after maybe this year or next year because I, you've I seen it kind of you've seen both the ways in some in golf like we've seen equipment trends emerge and then fall back so I'm curious well yeah because this will be let's see let me let me try to let me try to figure this out. I'm really good at bad at math, but this will be 50 years in the golf business for me. So yes, I've seen a couple things come yeah. and go. I've seen some trends come and go. Um, I think this is one that'll that'll hang on for a while because I think there is, you know, from a standpoint of hey, if I got a longer putter and I can stand out there and practice a little bit longer and trust it. Does it help me swing the putter better? Yes. Does it does it help me with over accelerating? Yes. So yes, is there there's real reasons. You know, most most things in golf that have stuck around for a long time is because the club performed. Yeah. You know, they're performance based. Sure. You know? Hey, you know, yeah, traditionalist. An iron's an iron, it's gotta look like this, it's gotta look like that. This is how I'm gonna play golf with it. But, you know, when somebody comes in my bay and goes, hey, I'm just struggling hitting a seven iron solid. I just want to be more consistent. Am I going to grab, you know, a Ping G430 or a Callaway iron that's more forgiving, whatever? Absolutely, because they, they want to play golf and they're not going to practice. You know, I just have a hard time looking at things that don't look like. Yeah. They were when I played in right. college. And that's your preference. but Yeah, and that's my preference. And are there times? You know, I was telling I was telling Aaron Roth, one of our other great fitters, you know, that I was hitting balls. And I'm like, you know, I was hitting six irons. And all of a sudden the five iron, five iron's getting a little flatter than it used to be. You know, it used to kind of peek yeah, out yeah. a little bit. And I'm like, oh, man, am I, getting, am I getting to the point where maybe I need to do something with this? <laughs> you know. Uh, you know, maybe change the shaft. We're not changing yeah. the head just yet. Might have to put something that kicks a little bit, but why not? You know, yeah. Why not? Why not try to make it a little bit easier? You know, uh, 
so I, I think this trend, you know, and I think what hurt it a little bit, what, what hurt longer style putters like was the anchoring ban. Yeah. You know, everybody kind of just backed away from it. Yeah, it's that's, like, that's a good point. Oh, you can't do this. You can't. Well, okay, so we all got to go back to short putters. Well, then you had guys like Webb Simpson figure out, well, you know what? I'm going to go to I'm going to go to the arm lock, which mm-hmm. is the only style they allow me to do, and I'm going to figure out how I can arm lock putt and, and yeah. still make a living on tour. So, I I think it, you know, I think it was just a little bit of that that, you know, that backdraft of the of the USGA saying, yeah. "Oh, I can't do you know." Maybe you a can't concern do that if, this. if something like this came out, right. that the USGA would right take action. But now everybody's kind of going, "Okay, well, you know, there's still guys on the Champions Tour. There's still guys on the PGA Tour putting this way. Maybe I should putt this way." Yeah, um, you know, and I have an opinion on the anchoring ban. I won't. I won't. Give it. Because, yeah, I mean. Well, I think it was. I think it was poor. I think it was detrimental. I think it was very detrimental to the average golfer. Yeah, I, I think, will say though. I will say this. When I was, I was 16 years old. Played the best round of my life with a belly yeah. putter. Yeah, it was. It made everything. Yeah. And it was. It was great. It was awesome. I will say I lost control on the long putts, but that's beside the point. I give. I give uh, you. I give you a real quick story. I never putted long, till 2006 going through a divorce so I was probably staying out a little bit too late on friday nights and <laughs> having a few too many cocktails and i went in i went to see scotty he said scotty he said i need a i need a long putter he was he was doing the future at the time oh the sure yeah ring in the back yeah yep. i said scotty you need a long putter he goes what do you mean you need a long that was kind putter? of one of the first models that you could yeah. actually get the long he's, style he's, he's like you're one of the best putters I've ever seen. I said, yeah, but I'm getting a little nervy, and, you know, I need something to lean on on Saturday mornings. And so he, he built me one. Friday afternoon, went and played our skins game at the club, hit three putts on it, hit three putts on the putting green, went out there and shot 68. And one of the guys goes, how long have you been working with that? I go, eh, since before we teed off. <laughs> about three minutes before we teed off and but again it's confidence you know it's just like was i did i concentrate more yeah because i didn't want to sit there and stick the thing in the ground right so i putted i putted that way for quite some time yeah you know if it worked like that quickly yeah and then and then have since gone back to yeah you know to a shorter putter but yeah i i think there's all times in our life as golfers that you know it's time to Mix it up, give it something uh, yeah, else a try. I don't think it. I don't think it hurts to mix it up at all. To sit there yeah. and go, you know what? Hey, I got a club in my bag that's not working. Yeah. I mean, what do we got there? We got seven all six right. alternatives. I think that's part of the reason this is going to stick around. Is also yeah. just all these manufacturers now, you know, big or small, are recognizing the demand for this stuff and providing all these options. Right. So. There's more out there. I, even back when there was long putters, um, you know, or belly putters, or even arm lock, there was nearly right. there wasn't as many options for those dis, those styles as there is right. I mean, right now, everything, every manufacturer has something that you can order in that 36, 37, 38 inches. And there's also obviously the 43, 44, 45 inches too. That um, well, there was just I, never that plethora of options before. And I think you're also you're, you're also looking at designing something where, hey, I got to have the right head weight. I yeah. think I think you've got you know because partially from feedback on the tour, I I know when I started doing my prototype, you know, if you look as usual, there's a bunch of lead tape on the bottom. Because yeah, a golf club's not a golf club unless it's got lead tape on yep. it. Um, Larry Bobka special. Larry Bobka special, but you find the feel that works so yep. you know when i was down in arizona I, I got this done and i took it out and i i hit it a lot on a putting green and then had it in the store and then took it to a few other fitters in there and had them hit it had a few other really good players down there and it's like yeah this feels right yeah so i think that's the other side of this is it's not as trendy as like oh my gosh i got a head i got to put a 39 right. inch shaft in it and let's see how it works because if the head's only about 
350, it's not heavy enough. Yeah. It's gonna the putter's gonna want to wander. Yeah. The, okay. The the construction of these is going through the right process of Absolutely. making sure it's Thousand validated percent. and it works. Right. And it's not just oh, let me find a design, add a longer shaft to it, and go. It's right. Well, making I, sure I the, think the, the other thing about this too is you know you've got a longer grip. You know, hey, some days you might want to feel a little bit more over it. Some days you might want to feel a little bit farther away from sure. it. Sure. I mean, I don't think it. You know, I. I you know, somebody asked me one time. I had a I had a player come in, a, a very good player in this this area in Minnesota, a good amateur player, and he said, he said, you know, there's some days I putt conventional, and some days I putt cross handed, and sometimes I interlock, and sometimes, and even through a round, he goes, I might change my putting grip through a round. And I go, not breaking any rules, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. All you're trying to do is make more putts. I got I got a couple friends that are much uh, lower caliber player yeah. than this person probably, but they do the same thing. It's like oh, this, on six feet I go cross hand, long putts I go traditional. It's a feel thing. Well, and think about it too. I mean, I, you know, when I was down in Florida and helping our golf out, Mark Kalkovecki was using our put, our putters, and he played he played the tournament, he played the Chubb tournament with two putters. Really. That's 40% of your strokes. He goes, well, I felt more comfortable with the mallet outside 20 feet, but I felt more comfortable inside 20 feet with the blade. There you go. Nobody says you only have to carry one putter. That's true. Right? Why not? Maybe, maybe players will go long putter and short putter. Maybe, you know. Uh, I, have seen, I have seen people carry long, long putters and short putters. Yeah, maybe that's an option. Like you said, 40% of the strokes. Yeah, I it's mean, not crazy. I, I I don't think it's crazy, and I think the more and more. I mean, if you look at it now, the more and more we talk about club fitting, we talk about, you know, getting your bag set up where we've got you know your yardage gaps are correct, and you're playing a golf, you're playing a uh, clubs in your bag for your golf course that maybe I got more forced carries, so maybe right. I'm going to play more lofted fairway woods where somebody else might play longer irons because yeah. oh i play a windy pl- why not do it with the putter you know it, it's it's kind of breaking the tradition of you know and you're talking to a traditionalist who's talking about breaking traditions <laughs> right but the tradition is to shoot the lowest score yeah you you're know right. yeah i mean hey I'll, I'll be honest you know my last go- my last goal in golf is to shoot my age, and I want to do it my sixties. And well, I would, lo- I'd love to, I'd love to do it, I'd love to do it this year, turning turning sixty four soon. Yeah. So I would love to shoot sixty four. I this bet you year. could do it. You could do it. Ch- you could score low at Chaska. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I've gotten close there. <laughs> I bet you have, honestly. I I've gotten close. Heard tales of your short game. Well, but, yeah. Um, so. Short games off the tee now, Drew. That's the problem, <laughs> right? Um, so, kind of wrapping this all up. I know we've we've kind of covered every really much everything. It seems like with related to these these longer putters, but you know we talked about it a little bit already. But if if someone's listening to this and isn't you know totally confident in what they have right now as, for the putter in their bag, I guess what would you say to them? Um, referring to these new styles in terms of trying them out, what would you tell those players? Well, you know, of course, come into a second swing or even call us online and yeah. talk to one of our online fitters and, and sit there and explain, hey, this is what's going on. This is what this is what I'm hoping to accomplish. I'm trying to get – I mean, there's nothing better than people coming into the store, and I have – since I've been in Arizona for two months, I have a load of putter fittings mm-hmm. that, you know, text messages going, hey, I'm thinking about going to one of these. I need you to fit me into one of these. Perfect. Okay. Come in and see somebody and, and get the reasoning why you should do it and also figure out that, hey, I've got a longer putter. I, I, I need to get that putter more closer to my body. Mm-hmm. You know, I saw too many people down in Arizona – with a longer putter and it was farther away, well, it's going to make your stroke worse. Right. So talk, you got to set up the right way. Yeah, you got to talk to somebody who understands, you know, the mechanics of this and the mechanics of helping your stroke get better. Sure. And you know, 
definitely need to write loft and lie. Mm-hmm. Yep. So um, that's incredibly important. You know, I, I I cut mine at I cut mine at thirty nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, would in retrospect would I go maybe a touch shorter? Yeah, maybe I would. Maybe yeah. I would. I uh, I think I might end up depending on to... the margaritas and tacos. <laughs> I might want to go a little shorter. <laughs> Well, I I might be uh, trying to schedule a quick little session with you when I when my uh, my jailbird gets gets here and we can maybe yeah, fine tune that thing a little bit. Well, I'm excited for that. Yeah, so. and I know we have uh, I know we have in March we have a, a Minnesota Men's Golf Association mm-hmm. uh, deal coming yeah. up at at Minnetonka. I mean, this is definitely a, a great conversation thing to do. Maybe even do a little bit of. A little bit of Q and A, and and talk to some of these people because some of the players uh, mm-hmm. about you know how this, this can style. help, how this can help you, or how it can't, you know. And and again, this style you can you know you can putt conventionally, you can putt cross-handed, you can claw it, you can do whatever you want. But again, it's about the three things I talked about. It's about setting the putter up on the correct line, body in a comfortable position. And rolling the ball the right speed, mm-hmm. okay? And rolling the right speed is trying to get away from this over-acceleration, yeah. getting the putter to swing. Well, if I've got something there that's extremely heavy, it's going to it's gonna help me swing that putter. Yeah, it's the really right speed. Yeah, it's really hard to over-accelerate these putters because mm. they it's going to feel really weird. Right, exactly, <laughs> if yeah. You do, if you do that. So, yeah, I, to me it's – you know, it's like anything, whether you're getting fit for a drive or iron, whatever. You know, and like I said, it's 40% of the game. Why don't you come in and get fit for it? And, and if you're curious about the styles, come in and try the different ones. Yeah. You know, come there and roll the ball a little bit. See what you think. See how it feels. And, you know, make sure you, you got the right loft and lie for your for your putting stroke. I like that. That's a, that's a great way to wrap it up. 40% of your game is on the greens with the putter. Yep. So why not use the, the best one that can possibly be out there for your putting stroke? So, yep. um, Larry, thanks for swinging by and having the conversation. Um, it's a pretty, pretty fun trend we got this year in 2024, long putters. Uh, I'm very excited to get started with mine. So well, maybe we'll have to film my little session with you. I think we probably should, but I think this, I think this is going to be an exciting year for golf. I think yeah. there's a lot of great, I think there's a lot of great products out, um, along with this the yep. drivers irons just a lot of a lot of really cool things going on and i think it'll be i think it'll be a great year for golf you know be interesting from the tour standpoint that's right the, there's, there's a lot to, to tour and live there. and you know yep. anthony kim anthony kim yeah. makes a, anthony kim makes his his return to golf this weekend so uh i think there's a lot i think there's a lot going on uh you know, and again, I, I went from two months in Arizona where everybody's just all about golf to coming back and oh my gosh, we were so busy we were so busy in Minnetonka on Saturday because pe- people are all about golf. They, they are here all still about too. golf. They are all excited, and yep. um, y- you can't not be excited about it. Well, yeah, there you have it. Um, it's uh, you got to go get fit, get fit at second swing, get with someone like Larry or any one of our experts. We'll get your putter dialed in. You'll make more putts, and uh, that 40% of your game will be a lot better. So, Larry, thank you again for joining for this conversation. Again, it's going to be a really good year, I think. Yep, it's going to be a great year, and I'm so glad to be back in Minnesota.